let's see. Let's see if Anna can click on. Hi, everyone. Thank you for your patience. Hey there. Oh, hi. Oh, my goodness. I'm sorry that we're talking under such circumstances. I know. Well, it's good to see you, and I appreciate you always showing up for me and uh, the DID community, and we could really use your voice and your feedback regarding the recent events with what happened with McLean releasing a grand round video. And um, it has certainly sent a shockwave throughout the community and people are upset, rightfully so. And they really need us as advocates and voices and to hold space for them because um, there's a lot of people struggling out there right now. Well, I'm happy to be here. Um, I read the response from Infinite Minds and couldn't agree more. And I thought it was a beautiful, mm -hmm response i feel a little bit more aggro than the letter <laughs> i do not appreciate um dear putin if i was your mom exactly that's exactly what we're talking about here today the reason that i use the language in my putin poem is because people don't understand this language mm -hmm. and so someone has to speak about it and we mm -hmm. we laugh at them and we make fun of them because we don't understand but we don't educate ourselves so we remain ignorant right what was posted on the McLean website was absolute utter ignorance from a position of power. And that is what is remarkably disturbing. It's one thing when trolls don't like my poem. It's another thing when you have a doctor who, who's done incredible work with an organization that does incredible work. You actually have been you, you worked with McLean and Harvard, right? Uh, as someone who was showcasing uh, stories self experience was, of being with right. DID and not wanting the stigma to continue. Right. Right. Yes. I was part of their McLean deconstructing stigma campaign and they were lovely to me and they are the only place that I feel safe to refer for inpatient admission, which so is why I have, a this is so dangerous Correct. because Correct. what the doctor, Dr. Robinson was saying, unfortunately, wittingly or unwittingly. And I genuinely think from his, <laughs> his convinced notion in the way that he spoke. I think he really thought he was doing something powerful and profound to help. But what he completely missed altogether is the journey. It sounds like a lot of his patients haven't gotten over the shame part yet. I did come into mm -hmm. my the office with my doctor and I told my doctor on day one, I don't agree with shame. Shame and I got a divorce a long time ago. Irreparable harm. We will never be getting back together. Okay. So if you see shame pop up in my world, call it out mm -hmm. because I don't do shame. So right. so I'm sorry to hear that his patients haven't haven't been able to overcome shame and however he's working with them, I'm sure he's trying to help them overcome the shame. Mm -hmm. But to 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 Basically, and for people who are watching and don't know what's going on, basically the doctor was using the grounds that because his patients and patients that he knows of only ever have shame around DID, mm -hmm. anyone who doesn't must be lying. And I mean, that was the take that I got from what he was saying, <laughs> that it must be factitious. It must be. Mm -hmm. And to, to as, a, as someone who, who holds what the title doctor represents in our world, which in my opinion, I disagree strongly with the almighty religion that is the medical world mm -hmm. and the way people bow down with blind faith to doctors and the almighty white lab coat. Mm -hmm. However, we do. And this is a part of our society. And when you hold that title, you cannot abuse that. You need to know exactly what you're talking about or you do not speak. And you certainly don't speak on the grounds of a one-sided argument that doesn't allow any room for conversation mm -hmm. because it's a lecture and basically stating that if your patients and if you are a DID sufferer and you don't sound like my patients and patients I've heard of, then you're not a DID sufferer. That's outlandish. That's insanity Correct. to me. And, mm -hmm. and I know what the word insane means and insanity, the definition of it. And I don't use that word lightly. I think it's crazy to, mm -hmm. to with, with a disorder that has been so misrepresented by my own industry in the entertainment industry when it was mm -hmm. labeled multiple personality disorder, which was actually initially the 
fault of the American Psychiatrist Association the to label this miss incorrectly to begin with it to then be portrayed in film and media in a way that does not reflect the journey that you and i have experienced mm -hmm. and then to and what all this time that you're on social media stealing people's content and using it as an expose for what is wrong with the community why what why don't you help <laughs> like there's somebody there's he's a wonderful i'm sure he's a wonderful doctor there's so much that he could do with his time that's way better than that so <laughs> i'm only slightly mad and a little bit impassioned um but i want to talk to you know i want you to 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 kind of open this conversation up about everything because i'm just a little emotional about it <laughs> well i think you're doing a great job and we need to see the emotion and we need to see the reaction to what's happening because you know i think what people don't understand you and i understand how hard this journey is and the time and the energy that it takes to put into the healing journey. And for people that are out there that finally get to a place of a comfort of whatever, finding their own people. There are plenty of people in community that are not out publicly that are very hurt by all of this that is happening, right? And um, I, I haven't even wrapped my whole mind around it, to be honest with you. Like when I reached out to you, like I'm going to make it my own statement next week, but I'm like, we need more voices. People need to be heard because a lot of people use social media to connect with other people. And it is in no one's right to say who has it and who doesn't. That is the most ridiculous thing I have ever heard of in my life, not to mention the harm that that one statement does. Um, mm -hmm. You know, even questioning some someone's reality because people that live with it do that all the time. They're in and out of denial. Do I have this? Do I not? Right? The whole acceptance process takes a long time. And this just really probably set a lot of people back, which is very concerning. And I'm embarrassed to be a part of the mental health field right now. I'm embarrassed that this is no. uh, coming coming from an no. entity. You're doing, I know, you're doing the right thing with it. <laughs> and thankfully, you, thankfully you're thankfully you using the title of doctor in the way that it's supposed to be used to, to do the opposite of what this conversation unfortunately did. And, I'm, and, and when he starts to realize the effect of what he did, mm -hmm. I bet he's gonna feel terrible. He's a human being. He's not a he's right. not a villain, but right. but at the same time, absolute lapse of judgment on all accounts by yes. everyone involved. Correct. Right. And I had reached out to him and I said, listen, I've heard some wonderful things about you. You, you guys have done incredible research. We need to have a conversation. The door is open so that we can have an, an understanding of what happened. And to, and to bridge the gap between the public, the providers, and people living with, with DID. And they have not responded. I reached out on Monday to Dr. Kaufman and Dr. Robinson. I'm still waiting to hear back. Um, and I really hope they are willing to have a conversation and offer some empathy, some validation, some understanding, and to take accountability where it's needed and to apologize for the harm that has been done. Absolutely. I agree with you and I and I you know will stand by and support your statement when you make it and and just for anyone listening who who has seen what Dr. Robinson with McLean and their what is it was a grand round that they were doing um, in regards to social media and the rise of self-diagnosis this is a community and I was saying this in in the in my story this is a community that notoriously has misdiagnosed or completely altogether didn't even take a, into account that DID, that Dissociative Identity Disorder, could in fact be what their patients are suffering with. Right. And this has been longstanding. Mm -hmm. And I, as I've been speaking out about this for the last several years, I have continually said that the statistic on DID of how many DID sufferers we may or may not have, I think it's well underreported, well underdiagnosed, mm -hmm. and the amount of childhood sexual abuse, and this is one of the things that really <laughs> got my blood pressure going when the doctor said that, and many of these people that he pulled their content without their permission off of Instagram and put it onto this video for anyone to see, exposing them and, and, and just in such a, in such a negative light mm -hmm. uh, and being so derogatory. Mm -hmm. But he said they don't, the, the, he said that they were saying all these things and that, um, that because they were somehow not crying in the corner about it, mm -hmm. that, that, that means that it must be untrue. Absolute 
unbelievable <laughs> assessment as a doctor to, right. to, to for first state, I don't know any of these people that I'm going to be using illustratively. And right. then to go on to say that they can't possibly have what they say that they have, even though he states clearly mm -hmm. that he doesn't know them. Mm -hmm. But then he goes on to say mm -hmm. that, that, that McLean and he and many others in his field are being consistently reached out to by younger communities mm -hmm. stating that they have DID and they act like caricatures and they wear different mm -hmm. outfits and this is all this self-diagnosis as is promoted due to these mm -hmm. types of people that he was illustrating mm -hmm. on social media and they have no reported this is what he said they have no reported history of tra childhood trauma I did not remember my childhood sexual abuse until four, five years ago. Mm -hmm. I was 31 years old mm -hmm. when I remembered that I was raped as a child. Mm -hmm. So because mm -hmm. they don't have reported trauma from them, and do you know how I had to actually get to my memories? Mm -hmm. I came in to my doctor's office and said, okay, I fixed myself from hair to hair. I'm good. I've just got these like little body things that are really annoying. Can we just like work this out in the next three to six weeks? Cause I got shit to do lady. And my doctor was so wonderful. And thank God for Dr. Ruan. Thank God for doctors like you, Dr. Fletcher. Thank God that there mm -hmm. are treatment specialists who can look at someone and mm -hmm. see beyond what they're speaking out of their mouth, mm -hmm. beyond what they're expressing and what they do or don't know about mm -hmm. their story and can say, I'm just going to hold the space for you until mm -hmm. discovery is safe enough to happen. Mm -hmm. And and so mm -hmm. what, an, I'm sorry, I'm just going to say it because I can, what an asinine statement to make that mm -hmm. because they didn't have reported trauma mm -hmm. that they must not have DID are you crazy you are right. crazy I'm sorry now I'm gonna stigmatize you that's crazy mm -hmm. the the uh, the likelihood that you remember early childhood mm -hmm. trauma is mm -hmm. we're finding is actually mm -hmm. very slim mm -hmm. in the brain the hippocampus mm -hmm. shuts mm -hmm. down mm -hmm. it does not store dangerous memories if it is unsafe to know them or remember them mm -hmm. and the brain only wants life to go on it's not about quality of life it's about mm -hmm. surviving so right. we, it is it's i think on average people don't uh, don't even remember their memories until they're in their 40s or 50s right, right. I'm, right. i mean i'm lucky i remembered when i was 31 but i had already remembered right. too late for the judicial system to do anything so our medical system our judicial mm -hmm. system some conversations need to be had and i just thank you for having this platform and i'm, I'm going to shut up now <laughs> well, you don't need to shut up. I love every minute of it. I think all of this needs to be said. And it's hard, you know, there's just, there's so many different layers. It's considered a hidden diagnosis for a reason. It's a brilliant gift. Yes, the, you know, the reported statistics is one to 3% of the population lives with it. I agree with you wholeheartedly that I think it's under reported because it is missed. And there's a lot of people that will never step foot into a therapy office for this reason. Yep. Everything that just went down is now saying to our community, we are unsafe. And whether they want to show up and take accountability for that, I don't know, but that's the reality. Now this big entity that has been so well respected now feels incredibly unsafe. So now I'm left with where now do I send my patients and families when they call for treatment? Mm -hmm. Because now this is the reputation right now until there's a reparative opportunity. And I was thinking about trauma the other day and how there's always attachment disruptions that happen, especially for people that live with PTSD and DID, right? There's been horrific abuse. It's hard to trust. It's hard to embrace feelings of love. And so when something like this happens, it sends a massive ripple effect. And so I look at it as a major attachment disruption between the DID community and the entity that they have sought safety from, right? And there's an opportunity for repair and we can use our voices, but until they come to the table and point out exactly where they took accountability and offer an apology and a path forward, yes. there's going to be some upheaval. And I do think, and I know you and I probably are on the same page, as much as this situation is painful and difficult, I do believe it will help be the start of some very hard and much needed conversations that have needed to be had for a long time. And we'll need to see if they show up to the table to continue to have that, that dialogue. And I agree with an infinite mind when they're talking about how 
there are a lot of people that self-diagnose. Actually, it's very common when you live with DID to actually figure it out yourself before your provider, mm -hmm. because there's just, there's so many moving pieces, there's so much going on. And so many people start to, to read on their own and try to figure out what is going on for them. And sometimes, you know, I know for me, it was me and my therapist together that discovered it. Even though I was told earlier on, I wasn't, I had so much of my own internalized stigma. I wasn't ready to own something like that. I was like, this is nuts. This is not what I know to be true we're yeah. still giving people a paragraph to learn about how to diagnose it in graduate school where there should be an entire seminar and a course and training and consultation um, to facilitate how to properly assess for it and you know help people engage in treatment and some people will never have the resources you and i have had to help them on the journey so they need things like communities like an infinite mind and resources and podcasts and books to help them understand. You know, you don't have to go and get a formal diagnosis um, to, to have DID. Um, and I know that does not sit well with the medical community and they're going to have to wrap their minds around that one because times are changing and it's time for change. And I've had enough. Like I know you always challenge me where you're like, you don't need to exit the mental health field necessarily. And I'm like, I, th this, this is, this is part of the problem. Yeah. I, I don't want to be associated with, with things like this, yeah. you know, and I do want the, I do want everybody to know that this piece is not representative of all providers. There are some like your doctor, mine, you know, there are some amazing clinicians out there trying well, to learn and get it right. To and help, and help. I bet, I bet Dr. Robinson is lovely for his patients. What is so mm -hmm. absolutely harmful that he did was to almost say, if you're not like my patients, correct then you don't have DID, which, which is crazy. Again, I keep saying the word crazy because this is what I think is crazy. Right. And, and this community that we've been diagnosed with them has been labeled the crazies, but that is, that is actually a standard for crazy because you, you cannot like, you can't, they're at no point. I mean, look at what's going on in our world right now with tribalism and, and this ridiculous two-party system and all the, the divisiveness of our world in politics. It's, it, it, it's impossible for people to say that two things are true at one time. And in fact, mm -hmm. two things can be true at one time. Dr. Right. Robinson's patients can be suffering in shame. And that breaks my heart to hear that. But mm -hmm. that is just the group that he's treating and that he's one human. So he can't be treating that many people. I mean, there's what, eight, you know, eight to nine hours a day in, in a, in a work day and five hours a week, you know, maybe he's got 40 to 50 patients, maybe he, each week that he's seeing, we're talking about a whole world here. And we're talking about a world where children are the last most after afterthought there is. Mm -hmm. They're used in conversations in rooms they're not in and in front of them as if they're not there. Mm -hmm. They've got laws that people are trying to get made for them that are actually not helpful mm -hmm. to them whatsoever. Mm -hmm. It's all about agendizing. Mm -hmm. and, and when it actually comes to the individual who experienced the childhood mm -hmm. that is in question, how many of them feel supported by the medical mm -hmm. community by right. the judicial community by mm -hmm. or by the judicial system i should say mm -hmm. i don't know because i talk to a lot of survivors mm -hmm. all the time mm -hmm. and i can't tell you the amount of harm that has been caused within the community mm -hmm. of counseling healing mm -hmm. doctoring mm -hmm. and i know that that's why you uh have felt that you are swimming upstream a lot of times mm -hmm. i will say just to make this very personal with my journey mm -hmm. i remember when i kept telling my doctor i'm so sorry um i just can't call her me like she, I, I i keep saying she i know that sounds weird when i say it as if she's never heard this before she's just treated she's treated like <laughs> you know survivors of sexual and domestic abuse for her entire career but i'm like telling her this, this is the first time she's ever experienced this but i'm like i'm really sorry i'm just i'm having a hard time referring to this you know this as me because i I don't have those memories, but, but she does. And, and I just have mm -hmm. to call her sheep. That's okay. And finally, after like several sessions of this mm -hmm. and going through a lot of different things, she, my doctor told me, she said, Annalyn, you're exuding something that most every single individual who I treat 
who has gone through what you've gone through does. And you're exuding on a very large spectrum, a, a, a deep dive into what is called DID. And that was when I was being diagnosed with dissociative identity disorder. Mm -hmm. I just thought I, I was like, yeah, there's some crazy stuff going on in my mind. I see like a lot of me and I can't like claim her over there in the corner to the left because she has some shit going on that I'm learning as you're learning about it. And, and I looked mm -hmm. at her and I was like, there's something like, this is a thing. And I felt so seen and mm -hmm. so, you know, help. And I, I have absolutely made mm -hmm. so much fun of myself and, and with my mm -hmm. friends joked about the like, well, which one am I today? Mm -hmm. You know, because mm -hmm. I don't want to be in misery for all of my life. Correct. My journey has been very colored. Mm -hmm. And as mm -hmm. I started the integration process, which I know he speaks about that no one would want to live in a functional dynamic where they are part of their systems. Mm -hmm. uh, Incorrect, Dr. Robinson. Correct. I wish mm -hmm. she would give me a phone call and I'll let him know how much I did. I hope they need do. to live and in that system. I, I really hope they do. I hope they bring you in there to have he a should. I, I will be very gracious. I won't call him an asshole to his face. Um, <laughs> no, I will say, look, you are an ass. But, but hey, let's have a conversation. Let's be realistic. Talk to mm -hmm. someone who's gone through this entire journey. Right. I have integrated my parts. I mm -hmm. am grateful that I have done that at this stage in my journey. Right. When my parts integrated for the first time, I called my doctor and flipped my lid. I said, they're, they're gone. I can't, I can't find them anywhere. Where did they go? And I started mm -hmm. telling her what happened. And I had had a moment where I experienced a profound amount of love shown to me mm -hmm. in a dynamic that I'd never really experienced that kind of love before. Mm -hmm. and, and, mm -hmm. and I saw the parts kind of suck up and go inside my body. And she said, you had an integration moment, like you mm -hmm. integrated. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's really lovely. That's amazing. Uh, no, <laughs> I want my parts back. Like, I, I'm not ready to be alone right now. Like, I felt a loss. And I, mm -hmm. I reached inside of myself and pulled two of my parts back out. And I continued my journey on mm -hmm. of healing with those mm -hmm. two parts because I didn't feel safe by myself. Mm -hmm. And I had my 13 year old self and my six year old self and I let all mm -hmm. the other parts go inside and go into forever sleep. But I was not willing or ready to let go of those other two parts of myself that had actually been me mm -hmm. longer than I'd been me. So, so I lived with them for a while mm -hmm. and then my six year old self started to go in more and she would, I was like, okay, but like, can you just like stick a hand out and be mm -hmm. like, yes or no? Like if you like things or if you're happy with things, like <laughs> I needed to check in with those parts of me. It made me feel safe and right. I still wasn't fully safe in my fluidity of oneness mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. to let go. And then right. I remember in December of 2000 and <sighs> Oh, I just saw this video again recently and it never ceases to, it was, it was, it happened a few months before I was talking to Dr. Amen and ended up going public about having DID. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was in the shower and I hadn't had suicidal ideation in a while. And I know that a lot of, a lot of individuals um, living with DID uh, experience that often. And I, it was mm -hmm. all day, every day. I just didn't want to live. I didn't want to be here. I tried to kill myself multiple times and I hadn't had, I hadn't had suicidality mm -hmm. in my world, not suicide, suicidal ideation, not suicidal attempts. I hadn't had it in a while. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden I was in the shower and just started, thoughts just started coming. I want to die. Mm -hmm. Like I can't be here. I need to die. I need to die. I need to die. And I, I was like, whoa, okay. And I use humor. So this is why I really got offended by what Dr. Robinson said, because me personally, I use defense mechanisms and humor throughout my life to cope with these horrible Same. things that happened to me because Same. I can't just cower and be in the shame. And, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and that's mm -hmm. another part that also needs love and, and, and doctoring help. And, and mm -hmm. I'm thankful that my doctor understood that I was sarcastic half the time. And she, she'd give a little giggle, but she wanted to also affirm the part of me that was needing to cope with sarcasm. But, but she knew mm -hmm. how to balance both. And she knew that just because I had the ability to laugh at something horrible didn't mean that I didn't have it happen to me. Correct. So I, well, what you're really talking about with the two things holding space for two equally opposing emotions at the same time is the dialectic. Like that's, so it's to prove the point itself, right? Mm -hmm. So I was in the shower and I'm having these thoughts. And then all of a sudden it becomes apparent that it's my 13 year old self who doesn't want to live anymore. And you and I have talked about this point, but for, to make this very 
Um, yes, I did plant meds. It's absolutely changed my life. So, um, segue, <laughs> sorry. Um, I saw someone ask a question on there. I was like, yes, I'm grateful for that process. But, um, but the, the, in this moment when I was in the shower and I became aware that it was the mm -hmm. part of me, the part of me that I was clinging on to, mm -hmm. to stay with me, <sighs> She and I still had, I still could, you know, communicate with six year old Anna. And she and I were kind of what would go on to reveal in the video, which I will share at some point. It's really heavy. So I'm navigating on how I'm yeah. going to do the content. But, but mm -hmm. people do need to see these things because we don't need people like Dr. Robinson and McLean mm -hmm. um, creating a space that's very big and loud and then not have a big and loud opportunity to see another mm -hmm. side. Um, and unfortunately, I, I, you know, I don't own Harvard or anything. So I, I just have to, you know, use my platform. But, um, <laughs> but I, I was in the shower and I was like, okay, and this is how I navigate when someone's talking to me about suicidality, because I've worked with so many survivors, and they'll call me in the middle of a moment. And I'm like, Hey, okay, listen, mm -hmm. I don't do the like, please don't do this. I don't do that. I say, what part of you do you want to kill? Because mm -hmm. some part of you doesn't feel mm -hmm. good in this world. Mm -hmm. Is it all of you? Because right. parts of me mm -hmm. have had to go away. And, and I don't mean parts of me in the language of DID. I mean parts of me in, in behaviors, mm -hmm. in belief systems, in mm -hmm. attitudes, in energy mm -hmm. that I didn't, that wasn't serving right. Annalyn's well-being anymore, right? right? Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, and there was this one moment where it was a part from a mm -hmm. DID part of myself, and it was my 13-year-old self, mm -hmm. and I got out of the shower and I said, I started to video journal process like I do all the time. And I started saying the craziest thing happened in the shower. I haven't had suicidal thoughts in so long. And they just started coming out of seemingly nowhere. And I, I think it's my 13 year old self. And she did not appreciate me talking about her in front of her, which, you know, is, you know, and all of a sudden my body started to move and, and I, she just took over my, mm -hmm. my body on the video. And I went from talking just as normal as I'm talking to you into the absolute hysterics that she was feeling. Mm -hmm. And she said, you and little Anna are happy. You and little mm -hmm. Anna can find love and I'm getting in the way of mm -hmm. all of your potential to find love because I'm so jaded mm -hmm. and I'm so angry and I'm so hurt. And, I'm so, mm -hmm. and I get emotional just thinking about all of mm -hmm. the, that emotion because mm -hmm. she was saying, you won't find love if you're me. Mm -hmm. So I have to go away. Mm -hmm. And you and little Anna should have love, but I just don't believe it's there for me. So I have to go. And I asked her, I pleaded with her, please mm -hmm. integrate with me. Just integrate mm -hmm. and we'll solve this. I have so much love. I have more love than you can possibly fathom. I have enough love for all of us. Mm -hmm. And she said, no, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can't integrate with you. I have to die. Mm -hmm. And it was crazy because I didn't process it. I, t I asked mm -hmm. her for a week. I was like, please stay with me for a week. Don't disappear for a week. Um, mm -hmm. I just couldn't get my head around losing this part of myself. And it was mm -hmm. really, really heavy. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. I did like a whole kind of ceremonial mm -hmm. release. And I told her, and I watched in, the, my, in my mind, the, her, she just walked into the blackness and she never came mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. And I cried and I cried, but I didn't really fully process it until I was on the Dr. Phil show. And he mm -hmm. actually said, so you've had, you lived as your 13 year old self for most of your life. And I was like, since I was 13, she was the strongest, most dominant me. Mm -hmm. She and little mm -hmm. six year old me would kind of mm -hmm. switch mm -hmm. reigns and they were never in the same place at the same time because the one was like a sweet little happy yay. And the other was like, I'll cut a bit, right? you know? <laughs> um, so, so that was like, they were not, they were islands. They did not hang out. I'm, not I'm laughing with you because yeah, we had because... similar experiences. So I, yeah, I get you it. Know. And you lived it. it's, it's such an intense process and you're not going to read about all this in no. a textbook. And when they talk about, you know, there's all this jargon around final fusion, this idea that all parts merge into one and that people can't live with functional multiplicity and be happy. You and I both know that I live with functional multiplicity yes. as I continue on my healing journey yes. and I have 
zero issue yes. with it. I've gotten to such a place in my healing where I have love and yes. acceptance and I yes. am no longer, you, you made the statement about no longer being interested in shame. I am right there with yep. you. I don't have time for that. If we allow shame to take over, we get to a really, really dark place. Yes. And, you know, and that's what, that's my concern for the community with everything that just went down is the amount of shame that events like this just trigger for yep. people. Yep. And there's, I want, I want everyone to know that you and I both stand for, you know, there is nothing to be ashamed of, of having DID. What happened to you to create DID was a horrible experience. Yes. DID can be a brilliant gift when you come to understand it for what it is. Yeah. And um, I wanted to circle back on the memory thing too, because I struggled with that. Yeah. I didn't, all my stuff didn't start coming forward until after my mother yeah. died. And it was told to me that, you know, with um, addressing my relationship with alcohol and the passing of my mother, it granted the system safety to finally come forward with all of the memories. And that didn't occur until my 30s, which wasn't that long ago. I'm going to be 42 in August, you know? Yeah. So, you know, to make statements about, you know, people's childhood trauma with never talking to them is outlandish. It's outlandish. And, you know, everybody's, you know, process with living with DID and their integration process or whatever they choose for them is what they choose for them. And we have to move away from this medical model of like, there's only one way and that people can't be happy with how they choose to live their life with their, with their parts. Well, and, and I, I don't know how old Dr. Robinson is. He seems to be a young enough young man that, that he's probably lived enough, but not an entire career of what he will look at after a 40 or 50 year long career and probably have very different things to say about mm -hmm. uh, treating individuals, especially with individuals with DID. Mm -hmm. But what I will say, having lived about 7,000 lives in <laughs> 7,000 years in one 35 year old body, um, <laughs> um, I will say this. An individual's journey mm -hmm. is not about the destination. It's mm -hmm. not something profound statement it's a cliche we've heard a million times mm -hmm. but why is this crucial in this regard right now based mm -hmm. on what dr robinson was saying mm -hmm. because he's talking about a clinical end result and he's generically imprinting it on, onto every single individual's mm -hmm. did journey mm -hmm. and he couldn't have have missed the mark more and that is why I do hope that I end up speaking with him and and maybe doing an open forum or kind of a townhouse type of thing um mm -hmm. where 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 the conversation can be you know mm -hmm. we we can maybe uh w bring some of my humor into what didn't work and let's find what does but what he can't possibly see for his his patients who who are right now embarrassed and in shame over what they're experiencing is their beautiful resilience. Mm -hmm. And maybe when he's been treating them for 15 years mm -hmm. or for eight years, or for me, I was in intensive outpatient with my doctor. So I was in there for two and a half years. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the journey was profound found mm -hmm. and and it changed colors a million times mm -hmm. and a million different shades and hues of those mm -hmm. colors were experienced by her right. and by myself mm -hmm. and she took things that i said and shared them because i asked her to with mm -hmm. her other patients because she said i wish that my other clients could know this mm -hmm. and i said you can use my name mm -hmm. you can use my information mm -hmm. and you can tell mm -hmm. them everything mm -hmm. that i've been through in this journey with you i want them to feel like they're not alone right. and, and it was because the 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 step by step ever evolving continually changing aspect of my journey was mm -hmm. so that i started at one place i arrived mm -hmm. at a place mm -hmm. i left that place mm -hmm. and arrived somewhere else. I left that place and arrived somewhere else. And I will continue arriving until the day I die. And I right. arrive in the e ether mm -hmm. and out of my body. But, but if someone lives for 10 or 15 or 80 or 90 years mm -hmm. functioning with mm -hmm. multiple alters in their system with multiple parts, mm -hmm. And they are functioning. That's amazing. Right. They're functioning. The, one of the major aspects of treatment is getting to a space of functionality. Correct. So, so in his limited desire and probably mm -hmm. a, a very, um, a very beautiful desire, uh, intentionally speaking, to, to reach the destination of 
full fusion, to use those words, or to, uh, to reach the, the full integration for his clients, he's missing their beautiful journey of the human aspect of what mm -hmm. this is. And there also another part that I really think that should have been brought to light mm -hmm. is IFS, mm -hmm. internal family systems. So when, when you might think that you have DID, why shut the door on people who are figuring it out? Why not open the conversation as you were mm -hmm. suggesting and as we're trying to do here and say, mm -hmm. hey, you know, you could have DID. The spectrum is massive. We mm -hmm. all experience disassociation and to some degree in mm -hmm. our lives and in mm -hmm. our journeys. But what it looks like is IFS, internal family systems. It looks like you don't feel safe mm -hmm. to be in your voice in your aniline voice i had so many voices because so i wasn't safe i want to i want to pause you for a second because i don't know that we're totally on the same page about ifs so okay. are you in support of ifs or not support one thousand percent of course okay. i mean i had an well, episode of podcast a, a podcast episode where where uh, my coast my co-star who's like this is going to be your episode you and gabrielle bernstein can talk about your trauma stuff because i'm fine and don't have any of this it ended up being all about her because she's so had protectors okay so with ifs just so because i'll give you the little there's it's a great therapy but where we get into danger in the field is applying it solely based to did because in ifs the parts are metaphorical when we live with did they're they're entities so although yes. it can be helpful i just want to make sure because there's lots of when we use the word IFS in the DID community, we got lots of different energies around it. So, yes, and so the um, way I explain the difference for me, because yeah. I absolutely was diagnosed with DID and not, and I didn't, internal family systems wasn't what was my world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see it like this. I had a bunch of islands mm -hmm. with no bridges. Mm -hmm. IFS, in my opinion, is little islands and groupings of land spots, but they've got bridges, they've got mm -hmm. roadways, mm -hmm. they've got pathways mm -hmm. to each other. So fluidity is in fact possible. You don't have to stop moving to go into another. In my experience mm -hmm. with DID, I would have to stop one island, go get in a boat, row myself right. to another island, <laughs> and then I would be trapped on that got island it. as that version yeah. of myself. So yeah. yes, I, I think we're saying the same thing, yeah. but absolutely. But my point is, he didn't even bring up IFS as a potentiality for the people he was claiming don't have anything or, or just being factitious. Um, IFS, is, if someone is dealing with something and it's not DID, that doesn't mean that they're not dealing with protectors that are popping up and they don't feel mm -hmm. like they can fully be themselves or, mm -hmm. or what they understand themselves to be. So there's so much language here that just mm -hmm. got washed out that went swing this, the spectrum from, if you're not like my patient and like patients that I know of, then you must be representing yourself the way social media sensationalized social media accounts mm -hmm. are. And therefore this is incorrect, wrong, and you don't have DID. And I know that that's a, that's a broad okay. way of, of um, paraphrasing what was said, but that was the sense that the viewer mm -hmm. received from the conversation, at least mm -hmm. on, on speaking personally and that was what I thought was very dangerous it didn't give any gray area whatsoever right well yeah and that's the danger of the all-or-nothing thinking and the other thing too is the medical model right like on average they say it takes somebody on average seven years of engaging in the mental health system before the diagnosis of DID is ever even mm -hmm. mentioned and then on top of that the estimated length of treatment for traditional psychotherapy we're not even talking all the because you and I have done energy healing yeah. and all the other kinds of things that some people choose not to do and that's fine but in if we're only going on the model of there's one guideline to treat DID or it looks like this you're talking years in psychotherapy and I disagree with that. I think that does not send a message of hope. I think mm -hmm. we're not looking at all of the alternative treatment methods and resources that are available to people. Um, and you and I talked earlier before we jumped on the live and you made a, a very broad statement about how everything that just happened was, that was not trauma informed. Yeah. For, for, a, for a practitioner who verbally states that he is Tr that he loves the work he does to treat trauma, to be so trauma uninformed mm -hmm. with his verbiage mm -hmm. and his presentation mm -hmm. and his expression mm -hmm. in the in the grand round that was put on by McLean. I was just like, I was taken aback. And again, he's a human being. Correct. This is a major, major F up. 
but it's one moment in his life. Mm -hmm. I hope that what he does with it actually becomes something profoundly beautiful for mm -hmm. the community because he has that position and power to do that. If he can, you know, take the notch, the, the knock on his ego a little bit that, that he got this one, not so great, <laughs> but, but Hey, mm -hmm. you know what? I've heard from the community. Apparently I shouldn't have gone this hard at this and I'm going to take another look at what I was researching. I'm going to, maybe he'll, he can explain mm -hmm. to us. This is why I thought this could be harmful. Mm -hmm. I actually realized that I should have had a more well-rounded conversation, maybe mm -hmm. more fully express myself. Cause maybe he actually was trying to condense it into a 45 minute conversation and thought he had to just hit the highlights and the clickbait and the whatever, whatever. <laughs> I don't know. Um, whatever the case, mm -hmm. I'm not mm -hmm. writing off any human being ever for a singled out situation. I certainly wouldn't mm -hmm. want someone to do that to me, even though I've experienced it publicly. Um, <laughs> but, but I, I, I do believe that the response is justified and warranted. Mm -hmm. And I hope that mm -hmm. more in the community will join conversations like this and start talking amongst ourselves yes. so that we can further the accurate and truthful mm -hmm. dialogue and i hope that some of god i'm just so heartbroken for the faces and the you know mm -hmm. the content that was shown on there right in such yeah such a whole like the the fact that beautiful woman and her husband like like having found this joyful playful way to navigate her altars and her parts to them like have it i just uh oh, it makes me sick to my stomach i just yeah that's yeah. not that's that's the part that really got to me yeah well, I mean, again, because it impacts human beings and the lives that they're living, yeah. right? And to be invalidated in that way is absolutely not okay. I really loved an infinite mind statement where they talked about how, from a psychological perspective, using terms like fictitious disorder and malingering take quite a great deal of assessment that needs to be done before those terms are even used clinically. Um, and so I thought they, they had a very well-written response, um, you know, re regarding those things. And they too are interested in those conversations to bridge the gap. I don't think any one of us, you, myself, and Infant Mind, um, wants to write off McLean or Dr. Robinson. But I think, no. like you said, we are, it's a call to action to have a conversation. And we are all willing to have that conversation. We need to understand what happened here. And we also need, like we talked about earlier, the taking of accountability, because we can't go back and change what just happened, right? But we can to use it as an opportunity to move forward and to bring hope and change um, to the people and the community you and I both care so deeply about. Yeah. Um, so before we um, wrap up, do you want to send some, because you're just so, I mean, you've been such a blessing in my life. And I, I've told the community when I gave my keynote, I'm like, and sitting with Annalyn McCord, and I read the poem that was inspired by you. You know, when you're seen by another person that lives with DID, it's a huge deal when somebody else gets it, when you don't have to explain anything. And you and I have not had too many meetings, but you just get, even in our exchange right now, you're like, I know you have this going on with this part. Or when we even had our first meeting, you're like, I know all your parts are gonna be super <laughs> like unsure of me right now, yeah. right? Like you just get it and you know, and I, you're such a gift and a voice to the rest of the dissociative community. And I want to just share you with them. And, um, Yay. you know, I want you to give them the messages of hope because you are my fellow rainbow warrior <laughs> and you're such a divine light. And um, I know we had, you know, this intense conversation so that we can elevate the voices. Um, but I want you to leave them with some, with some hope. Yes, absolutely. I love that. And I love you. And I'm so grateful for you and all your use. Um, last thing <laughs> I'll so say, many. The last thing, there are so many, <laughs> I met a few of them. Um, there are, the last thing I'll say about the medical yeah. community is what are you doing in our world? You came here to be our, our healers. Mm -hmm. Why did you go to school for all those years and do all of that work? My, my closest friend, my best friend is at Columbia right now in pre-med and it's a nightmare. Like it's, I can't believe at 40, she's gone back to school and she's, mm -hmm. she's pursuing her dream to be a healer, to be someone who elevates mm -hmm. the lives of people who are going through things that are painful. Mm -hmm. Remember why you're here and why you do what you do. Mm -hmm. It is not to call us out for our sensationalized responses to our very scary journeys dealing with mm -hmm. trauma. Mm -hmm. It is to be the light mm -hmm. at the end of the tunnel, mm -hmm. that there is an end to the tunnel. Mm -hmm. That's why you're here. If mm -hmm. you, if not, then, then why, mm -hmm. why choose the pathway of being a healer?
that is mm -hmm. what being a doctor it used to be called a healer to be a doctor was to be a healer mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. i'm asking the medical community to do what you came here to do heal us mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. show us the pathway to healing mm -hmm. be the healers that you studied all those hours at those really hard schools right. to be able to graduate have that title and choose to do and follow that path so that's my the last thing that i'll mm -hmm. say in regards to that and and not uh, to mention that, sorry, I just can't help myself, but the doctor's oath is to do no harm. So, I mean, yeah, you know, and there's and, and an that opportunity means, here. That means that you can be the smartest doctor in the world and your ego will still get in, the, in your way. Mm -hmm. And if you're capable of offering what you're there to offer mm -hmm. with the beauty that is the powerful decision to have humility, you will actually do what you mm -hmm. went to school for mm -hmm. and you will heal the individuals that you work with. You will mm -hmm. do no harm. Mm -hmm. So I, I implore those mm -hmm. in the medical community to, to take that into account coming from someone who mm -hmm. is so grateful that I found an EMDR specialist mm -hmm. who spent her entire profession treating what I had so that when I walked in the door, she already knew mm -hmm what mm -hmm. I needed and how to provide it. And, mm -hmm. and there was never a question of whether mm -hmm. or not shame would, would have been allowed in that room because she wouldn't have created a space where it could stick around for very long. She had mm -hmm. so much grace for me and so much warmth mm -hmm. and love and shame just wouldn't have been able to stick to those walls. So I, I thank the healers and the doctors like you and like mm -hmm. Dr. Ruan and and Dr. Mm -hmm. Robinson for, for the, I'm sure that his patients actually mm -hmm. feel very held by him. And, and that I hope that this is something that he takes with him and, and becomes the best doctor we've ever had on this issue. Um, mm -hmm. But to the community, mm -hmm. um, I, <laughs> I'm going to get a little closer. <laughs> hmm. Will you take a deep breath with me into your belly as big as you can take it. Get some more air in, move it around a little bit, sip it in and let all that intensity out. Cause we did just go through a, a whole roller coaster of emotions and journey uh, on this little journey that we just uh, took you on. So I'm not sure or which parts of you may have gotten activated, which parts of you wanted to run and hide in the darkness of your mind and never come back after maybe hearing some of these things. I hope there's one of you that wants to hold the light for the rest of you. But remember, if your arms get tired, you don't have to hold it. You are the light. If you are one or you are many, when you bring the flame together, they can join into a perfect, purifying, refining fire. That is what you are. You are not alone. <laughs> not just because you're not alone. <laughs> <laughs> because those of us who have scaled the walls of the journey of the parts. And I, I found another, I was telling Dr. Fletcher a couple of weeks ago, I found another part of me mm -hmm. just a few weeks ago. And she and I went up and down mm -hmm. and all around and, and I brought her into safety. And the words of a part to the dominant that mean mm -hmm. more, more than anything on planet earth, at least in my experience, is I trust you. Mm -hmm. And my parts did not trust me in the beginning. And the first thing I asked this little part when she popped up and I was in so much anguish and my body was seizing up and reenacting the trauma she had lived. I said, do you trust me? And she looked at me in my mind's eye and she reached up and grabbed me and wrapped her arms around my, my neck. And said, yes, I trust you. And I said, good, because I'm gonna kick some ass for you. <laughs> And we went into that scary memory where she had separated from me and had remained buried for many, many years, for 25 years, more than 20, yeah, somewhere around there. 
-hmm. and um, I brought in the resources that were needed mm -hmm. so that she could feel safe. Mm -hmm. And she didn't want to integrate at the time. And I do always ask, mm -hmm. but she was willing to let me put her to sleep in a light bubble. So mm -hmm. whenever your, your parts are feeling stressed out and are in this space where they're activated, especially if they're activated by the external world mm -hmm. that can be so cool at times. Mm -hmm. I, I recommend that you put that part into a light bubble and ask her or him or them, they would like to go to sleep for a little bit and bring your focus to your body, that, that part of you that is one and notice the parts of the body and breathe into the parts of the body and connect your arms to your torso and your legs to your hips and breathe the air and see how it goes all the way through and know that you're fully seen and you're fully held in the safety of that space. Mm -hmm. And that somewhere on this little wild little round called earth, there's a crazy curly haired blonde woman who's rooting and cheering you on. <laughs> I love mm -hmm. you. All of you. Thank you for being as brave and courageous as you are to face this journey mm -hmm. with your parts. Amazing. You are amazing mm -hmm. and a divine light in this world. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for responding to me immediately, for looking into all of this and for using your voice and your position with where you are and sharing your soul and your parts with all of us because we need you because we really are all in this together. And I mean, you already know, I just adore you. I love you to death. And I look forward for you and I to have future conversations. And um, I'm so blessed that you are here to show up for the entire DID community because I know um, that you are just so integral to this process. And, and I hope that we provide that for you and your parts as well. Absolutely. Being part of that community. Absolutely. Absolutely. It, I mean, it's, it was, um, there was a woman named Jane and uh, she did uh, a show on A&E. Um, yeah. The many sides of Jane. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and I felt so seen mm -hmm. by watching that. And it was like, wow. Okay. And, and I, I would do this thing when I, I know we're wrapping up, but we keep going. Um, other, well, we, you know, we could go, keep we could going go forever. <laughs> um, when I work with survivors who are in a moment and I know they're splitting into a younger or an other, I always bring in little Anna, even though I, I have integrated, mm -hmm. I, I still have full access to those parts because they mm -hmm. will always be there. And I, I asked little Anna in one situation, I was like, do you mind coming out? and talking to this woman who I was literally cradling in my arms, a grown woman. And little Anna said, of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she pops out and all of a sudden, mm -hmm. this young woman who could then fully speak in her baby self felt mm -hmm. so, so much healing integration, connection, love, profound, mm -hmm. a profound mm -hmm. healing took place in a half an hour in an, on an afternoon. Mm -hmm. Like once we started the communication between that little part of me and the little part of her that had surfaced. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. what we came to discover was that she was embarrassed about getting hurt or having mm -hmm. any kind of pain. Mm -hmm. Boo-boos were not allowed. Mm -hmm. And Anna Lynn might not have gotten that information, but little Anna was able to get in there mm -hmm. and say the right things and connect in only the way that she knows how to connect to allow this little part of this young woman to say, it's not safe for me to have boo-boos. Mm -hmm. And that meant as an adult, boo-boos on her heart pain in her relationship with her husband, fear of being alone or abandoned, uh, mm -hmm. a migraine, a headache, embarrassed that she's in pain because she does not get any mm -hmm. sleep and she's feeling the ramifications mm -hmm. of not getting rest. These mm -hmm. things were plaguing her. And now she can, with her adult voice, say that she's tired mm -hmm. and she needs to take a break mm -hmm. and turn the lights off because of her migraine. And mm -hmm. that all is a result of having been able to let that little her mm -hmm. come up, mm -hmm. tell little Anna who matched her energetically and, and mm -hmm. 
um, with the safety and the, the sameness and the familiarity mm -hmm. of, of what little ones feel together. Because that was able to mm -hmm. occur together, the, she doesn't have an embarrassment mm -hmm. about some, those wounds. And I later found out from her mother that she was mm -hmm. like that since she was a little girl. And the mm -hmm. mother was kind of unfortunately like, oh yeah, she was always embarrassed when she fell down. And I'm like, hold on, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's not, not okay. When mm -hmm. we fall down and get mm -hmm. hurt, we need to be held. Mm -hmm. We need someone to like my doctor would always this is her, her face was permanently like this but she was like mm -hmm. and i in my mind i go back to dr juan's face shaking her head and i know all the time when something's not okay and when i was questioning it and i wasn't sure inside myself and my parts were mm -hmm. trying to communicate with each other about whether or not we didn't we liked or didn't like something i would immediately go to what would dr ruan's face be doing right now mm -hmm. and i would see <laughs> it was just full of empathy and, and mm -hmm. communication from a big person to a lot of little parts of me. Mm -hmm. This is not how we treat children. This is mm -hmm. not how we treat humans. This is not okay. Mm -hmm. Dr. Ruan is not okay with this. And mm -hmm. she, she, her face, <laughs> her furrowed brow put so many painful parts of me back mm -hmm. together, mm -hmm. uh, like Humpty Dumpty. And, and thankfully, little Anna is able to pop up mm -hmm. and pop out and do that ever so often for a little when I'm working with survivors of, of these mm -hmm. severe traumas. So another tool that the community can use is just, you know, I go to the mirror sometimes and I'll do it for myself. Actually, I'm going to send you mm -hmm. a video after this because we might just post it or, or do something with it. It's a long video, okay. but it shows the full process of what I do. Mm -hmm. And it was, um, it was kind of, um, I hadn't had a lot of things come up and I had something come up in that moment, mm -hmm. but, um, I'll share it with you and we can discuss it. Maybe we do a zoom on it or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but it just popped up yesterday cause I'm putting stuff together, but process is so important. Yes. We've got people saying this is not right. And this is right. And this is wrong. You know, what, where is the process? Where are the tools? Mm -hmm. This is what we really need to see process. Right. And, and in this video, you see me, I, I start out the video saying, I don't really know what I'm feeling right now. I'm feeling mm -hmm. something. I don't know what mm -hmm. I'm feeling, mm -hmm. which typically means a part of me is feeling it, but they're not ready to come to the light. So the mm -hmm. other part of me is trying to like use her intellectual brain to work out what could possibly be the problem, which is definitely <laughs> not the pathway. SME, SME, subject matter expert. Subject matter expert. The SME comes in. Um, <laughs> SME is one of my, <laughs> oh my gosh, my, my sister not like SME at all. Um, but subject matter expert comes in and elongates her neck and says, I know what might be the problem here, darling. Um, and what's so funny, you know, this Dr. Robinson, just to go back to it one more time, I have a British altar, like a full blown British altar. And I just, you know, it's always assumed it was because I'm an actress or whatever. But I noticed once I'd gone through healing treatment or whatever, she still pops up and I have no desire to integrate her. I love my British altar. I will always have her around. She's hysterical. I think that she's now going to be the headmaster at Hogwarts um, because she's into magical youth things. Um, but, but I actually, I realized when I would do it, when were the, when were the times that she would pop up? Well, I'm just hoping that when I come to visit you next month, I, which I think is on the docket with your, with your BFF. Oh, yes. um, that, <laughs> that I can meet the, uh, British Oh yes. You'll definitely, I could use, Australia. I could use some humor in my yeah. world. <laughs> you know, when she would pop up, she would pop up when I would need to tell someone that I couldn't make plans. And I personally would feel all this like shame and guilt rise. And then I'd be like, oh my God, darling, you know, I absolutely want to be there, but I so cannot. And it would just pop up like that. And, and I can do it obviously because I am an actress. I can do it at any point, but it would genuinely come up because I didn't feel like I could tell mm -hmm. someone I can't make a plan and it, I, I, in my body was too uncomfortable so i would pop up i'd get in my little rowboat and row over to the british isle and then i'd be like okay now i can handle this and that's what process shows right mm -hmm. and in this video 
um, I think we should do something where we play it and break it down and talk about each part of the yeah, video. Yeah, whatever you want to do. It's multifaceted, yeah. the process of this video. Um, isn't that interesting? I, multifaceted. Isn't that know anything about that? I wonder why that is. <laughs> there goes, the, that was actually her. Um, <laughs> that's really funny. <laughs> um, but so, um, but it was, it, it went up and down, up and down. The part came out. She said she didn't want to process the thing. I start going into resourcing and providing safety, told her she didn't have to process anything. We don't have to look at it or talk about it. Ends up going into it during the video. Like, and you see the whole entire experience of it. And this mm -hmm. is what individuals who have suffered severe trauma need to see. Mm -hmm. Whether you've been diagnosed with DID or not and it mm -hmm. might be because you haven't yet been diagnosed but mm -hmm. that's beside the point mm -hmm. if you suffer from any shame guilt pain around things that center around love which is what this video is about you have a wound that mm -hmm. needs process in order to mm -hmm. process it mm -hmm. and and so the video shows that so maybe you and I can totally. do a zoom where we can play it on the thing then come whatever back you to need conversation yeah Okay, yeah. cool. I'm excited. Um, we, we're gonna say goodbye to the for the 19th time. Um, is everybody <laughs> cool with saying goodbye? <laughs> yes, I've well, got again, thumbs up on all goodbyes. Again, again, thank you so much for all of you for showing up for this and for weighing in on this. And I think the conversation will absolutely continue with regarding what's going on with McLean. And then yeah, we can do whatever you want to do with um, you know, future conversations with your journey, my journey, and 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 helping the community understand the process because that is the gift that you really gave me when we met was we're not talking a lot about the process. And I think people, right, they want to kind of talk about the before or the end because it's scary to talk about the middle, especially when there's so much stigma that we're working to, to break yeah. down. So, you know, again, thank you for being a divine light and for being here. And I'm not even going to say goodbye. I'm just going to say until next time. Okay. I'm probably going to call you right after anyway. So. <laughs> All right. Sounds like a plan. Do that. Okay. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Right, bye, everyone. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>